Welcome back to the Sunshine State Rails. It's July 29th, 2022, and we're out on the CSX's Tampa Terminal subdivision around milepost AZA 883.2. And a CSX ES44 AC-H would be working power for today's L783, the new train identification for the local Palmetto Switcher, the former 0750. Locomotive 3136 would be in charge of pulling today's rock train southbound to Palmetto. 55 cars of various aggregates bound for the Conrad Yelvington off the Parish Spur, and might I add these 10 miscellaneous boxcars bound for Port Manatee just off Tampa Bay. Though the rock portion of the train will be today's main focus, as it really has been for me since the beginning, an interesting sight to see rock along the Palmetto Sub where we're always used to seeing Tropicana cars. That and having a Conrad Yelvington so close to my home rails near Bradenton adds some really interesting operations to the southern end of the CSX system in Central Florida. Just the day before on July 28th, we had come out to see the inbound juice train, symboled L700, with a peculiar set of engines leading into Bradenton. A pair of a GE wide cab Dash 8 and Dash 9, respectively. Number 7929, known to be the only XLMS Dash 8 currently active on the roster. LMS was an old leasing company that was owned in part by Conrail, which explains the design of the nose and headlight placement on the Dash 8. After catching that train though, I heard some peculiar radio chatter on my scanner which would attract me back up to Palmetto, and to the Conrad Yelvington, where the crew there was unloading rock hoppers that had just arrived the night before on L783. I've only seen this operation a few times over the years, so to see it again was a very neat sight, especially considering that the next day there would be even more hoppers coming down. The Conrad here at Palmetto uses an ex-Ohio Central System GP10, having only been patched with the Conrad Yelvington markings and not fully repainted yet, which makes this a very interesting operation to see. This industry actually used to use an Alco S2M for the switching operations, which they got rid of somewhere around 2018 and donated to the Florida Railroad Museum, where it still operates today under tourist excursions. The new 2114, though, is seen idling this morning, unloading rock hoppers at the Conrad Yelvington in Palmetto. It's a fairly detail-based operation that involves centering the unloading doors above the grounded metal screen and then opening the doors to unload all of the aggregate rock into the chute below. Another interesting aspect of the unloading operations is the <laughs> giant vibrator above the tracks. If you've ever wondered what these giant structures are above Conrad unloading centers, this is basically what they are. A giant metal apparatus that spans the width of the car comes down and clamps the sides, and simply vibrates to get every last bit of rock out of the car so they're not missing any, as sometimes gravity doesn't do all the justice it should. As the cars unload, the rock dumps underground onto a set of conveyor belts that will take it to a spot out in their holding field, with the second conveyor belt being able to rotate about 180 degrees around a center point so that piles of perhaps different types of rock can be created in different places. This is how Conrad keeps their stuff organized, because this is essentially the middleman of their operations. The goods are brought in by rail, unloaded and held in their holding centers, which are the Conrad Yelvington facilities. The products then go to their final customers from here by truck. So it's important to make sure that everything is organized so that nothing gets mixed up before their final miles to customers. We wouldn't stay for all of the unloading operations as it was going to take quite a bit of time to complete and we had only planned on being out this morning for the inbound juice train. That and because the following day, right in this territory, L783 would be our main focus. Back out on the main line at Port Manatee, our rock train is continuing southbound en route for Palmetto. The mid-afternoon sun shines down on the small town as traffic on the main 10th Street is brought to a sudden stop by our inbound rock train crossing the scene.
As the rock train clears 10th Street, it reveals just how heavy traffic on this road can be, even with a delay like this of only five minutes. Having dropped the conductor on the ground before rolling the train past him, L-783 has thrown the main line switch at milepost AZA 914.6 so they can shove the train backwards onto what is known today as the Parish Spur. It's on this line that Palmetto's Conrad Yelvington resides about two miles to our northeast. Though as the train begins shoving into the parking lot of Taylor Fulton Packing House, they would experience what could arguably be a conductor's worst nightmare. The connection between the rear train line air hose and the end of train device would break over the asphalt of the road, causing the train line air pressure to completely dump and throw the train into emergency as the loss of pressure would set all the brakes on the train. Though it's not so much of a nightmarish case for our conductor today, as he was already at the rear of the train walking with it, so all it would require was reconnecting the two and rebuilding the air pressure. Though, had something like this happened when the conductor was at the other end of the train in the locomotive, this would be a different story. But in this case, all it took was rebuilding air pressure, so within a couple of minutes, they were back on the reverse roll again. At, uh, 31, 36. Come on back, give me about, uh, six up to a stop. It's so easy now. You too, Blaine. You Keep Shoving the train backwards now across the parking lot of Taylor Fulton Packing House toward the Conrad Yelvington of Palmetto, the train is now crossing over onto what once was the mighty Seaboard Sarasota subdivision. Construction of that line began in 1895, where it wide out of what is today known as the CSX Valrico subdivision, from Durant, Florida running south about 69.7 miles to Sarasota. That line included nine passenger stations along the route, such are in order heading south. Durant, Waimama, Parrish, Palmetto Junction, Bradenton, Onico, Sarasota, Bee Ridge, and Venice. The majority of the line to Sarasota was completed in 1903, with freight and passenger trains running daily to Sarasota and Venice by fall of 1927. Such is the way it would be until the merger of the Atlantic Coast Line and Seaboard Air Line in 1967, at which point the two roads were consolidated and most through trains were discontinued, being rerun over the former Atlantic Coast Line main that's still in operation between Tampa and Bradenton over what's known today as the CSX Tampa Terminal and Palmetto subdivisions. The old Seaboard Sarasota sub was still worked by local switchers coming up from Bradenton until 1979 where it was left in the way you'd see most of the scenes along it today in 2022. The only parts of the old Sarasota subdivision that remain intact today run from the Tropicana plant in Bradenton to northern Sarasota, and from here in northern Palmetto up to Waimama, Florida, at which the Florida Railroad Museum runs their excursion trains between Parrish and Waimama. CSX only uses the very southern portion of such a line in Palmetto to serve their Conrad Yelvington. And it's the southern part of the old Y that formed the interchange between the ACL and SAL roads that L783 is using here to branch off of the former ACL main and onto the former Sarasota subdivision. About two miles to the east, and we're at the dead end of 12th Avenue East, staring down a line of empty rock hoppers. As you may be able to guess, these are the empty cars that we saw the Conrad crew unloading the day before. And today, it would be the job of L783's crew to take those hoppers back north. Watch to the bottom, row 15, back up 4.
783's crew would have to drop the loads off while simultaneously taking the empties away. This would be accomplished by first pushing the empties out of the way, so they can then shove the loads onto the second track and out of the way of the empties. Nine eight eight, about six rock cars. Clear answer. Thus leaving the loaded cars in place for the Conrad crew to pick up later, and the empties on a separate track free to roll out. Eight two zero. 3136. This outer background track is where L783 is going to drop all 55 of the loads for Conrad Yelvington. They would accomplish this by simply pushing them all the way onto this track beyond the switch we saw earlier, cutting a crossing along the way. Once that was done, the crew could go back south of the switch from before, hook onto the empties that are now on the other track, and then simply pull them away. And it would be around this time that 783's crew would put in a request to the Alafaya River bridge tender to get the remotely controlled Big Manatee River span down and locked as these guys would have to go further south across the giant river into Bradenton. And with the empty cars out of the way, we can see here all of the 55 loads stuck on that outer track. And since the length of our loaded train exceeded the length between the aforementioned switch and the 16th Avenue road crossing, the crews had to cut the train into two pieces. Hence, cutting the crossing as making it two pieces allows for them to clear the road crossing and allow vehicle traffic to pass over, as these cars won't be moving anywhere particularly soon. As L-783 prepares to depart Palmetto, we move across the Big Manatee River into Bradenton to wait on the train, and here we have a clear view of the Big Manatee River drawbridge as it comes down in preparation for our southbound train. In downtown Bradenton, we've set up at the old Bradentown Depot. This structure was built in 1925 as a passenger depot for the Atlantic coastline, though the station would end up being taken out of service in 1952, just over a decade before the merger would occur between the ACL and SAL roads. From there on, the building would fall into a state of disrepair until the early 2000s when it was preserved and transformed into what it still stands as today, a variant of medical offices, still in practically its original form, just as close to the ACL main though hardly seeing as many trains nowadays, and none of them being passenger trains, which really puts into perspective as L783 rolls south, how the average American citizen nowadays has totally forgotten about the railroads and their crucial role in today's society. A plethora of manifest movements like this one continue rolling the rails of the United States, delivering freight to customers awaiting, but even so, the average person has not a clue that these railroads play the crucial role in keeping this society afloat, and so it's definitely on no one's watches that passenger trains of any kind will return to lines like this anytime soon, if ever. Sometimes it's sad to sit back and think about that even though they did it one time, these trains don't stop here anymore. The reason that L783 has come across the Big Manatee River from Palmetto is because their engine is on the wrong side of the train to go back north. They have to find a place where they can move the engine from one end of the train to the other so they can pull it the other way. Otherwise, they'd have to push it, and nobody really wants to do that. And because the closest place to Palmetto is Bradenton, this is where the 783 would come to leave their train on the main and then run around it on the tracks outside of Tropicana Yard. For reference, we're at the US 301 and 41 crossing now, only about a mile northwest of the Tropicana plant, and this is actually where they would stage the outbound Tropicana consists for the longest time until they shifted that down to 26th Avenue just south of the yard, presumably to stop traffic holdups on this very busy intersection. And also because admittedly over the years, the Tropicana outbound trains have gotten shorter and shorter, so they really don't need this long stretch of empty track anymore. It'd be more than enough for 783 though. Leaving their consist on one track and then switching to the other, all it would require then was running the engine around on that second track from the one end of the train up here to US 301 at the other end.
center. Four, five. Head north, uh, get that big man tea down, please, sir. The sun sets on Florida's west coast. L783 with their 21 aggregate empties and 10 miscellaneous boxcars bound for Port Manatee departs Bradenton on their trip north for Tampa. They'd be dropping those 10 boxcars in Port Manatee's yard along the way back. But other than that, this crew's only goal was to be back in Yeoman Yard in Tampa before midnight tonight. And so, waving goodbye to Bradenton, we'd leapfrog the train north a ways to just north of downtown Palmetto where we were all this afternoon, at which the sun would shed its final rays of light for the day. 783 with a speed restriction due to a lack of ditch lights on their long hood forward locomotive wouldn't be that hard to follow back north up the line this evening. The next 12 miles north on the line brings us to an eerily empty Port Manatee yard. Those second and third tracks on the right were for the longest time the staging point for diammonium phosphate trains coming from CSX's Bone Valley region for export via ship inside Port Manatee. And with the trains being unloaded in small cuts of cars at a time, this yard would constantly be full of hopper cars waiting to be unloaded. Though such hasn't been the case in 2022 and this yard has been empty for months. As I've heard that earlier this year, Kinder Morgan, who handles the unloading operations inside the port, experienced a major mechanical failure with their unloading equipment, resulting in all of those export operations to be shifted to another Tampa Bay port, ultimately drawing an end to all phosphate trains running to Port Manatee. Now, that's not to say forever, as Kinder Morgan does plan on returning service to the port here at some point, though depending on whatever issue they encountered, I've heard that it could be up to a year or more before we see any sort of service return here. Though the port also houses industries that receive general freight, and the L783 would have 10 cars for those industries this evening. With three empty box cars at the north end of the yard ready to go north, it would be the job of 783's crew to swap the loads with the empties and take the empties north with them. I did find it very interesting this day that 783 decided to take the box cars down south with them and do this work on the way back to Tampa. Typically they'll do stuff like this at Port Manatee on the way south instead of north. Though this may have had something to do with them having empties to take with them as well. But either way it'd only be another half hour or so out of their shift. As this work would pretty much be the same as that, that they did in Palmetto just on a smaller scale find a place or second track to put the loads off to the side and leave them, pick up the empties on the other track and then continue on. Another 20 if you need it, 31, 31. 
I move up to County Line Road as 783 finishes their switching maneuvers and then reverses to pick up the conductor back at the main switch. County Line Road would be our final spot for the evening as once the train cleared I'd cross the tracks and set up as momentarily they'd be back on the northward move, destination Yeoman Yard, Tampa. CSX's Palmetto Subdivision Local, the old 0750 with a new face of L783, now had their all-empty consist en route for Tampa. 21 empty hoppers from Palmetto's Conrad Yelvington and 3 empty boxcars from the yard at Port Manatee. It felt good to get back to familiar territory and see this train again because ever since they've shifted its operating days to only weekdays, it's been hardly ever that I get to see this train anymore. But I'm glad that I was able to spend this July afternoon following our familiar face with a new face. And I hope that you've equally enjoyed our documentation of the aggregate and other miscellaneous operations on the southern end of CSX's Palmetto Sub. And so, until next time, this is Coda Beaner at Port Manatee, and I'll see you next time, wherever that may be, out somewhere upon the Sunshine State Rails.